Glucose Tolerance Test, Wikipedia Article Audio The Glucose Tolerance Test is a medical test in which glucose is given and blood samples taken afterward to determine how quickly it is cleared from the blood. The test is usually used to test for diabetes, insulin resistance, impaired beta cell function, and sometimes reactive hypoglycemia and acromegaly, or rarer disorders of carbohydrate metabolism. In the most commonly performed version of the test, an oral glucose tolerance test, a standard dose of glucose is ingested by mouth and blood levels are checked two hours later. Many variations of the GDT have been devised over the years for various purposes, with different standard doses of glucose, different routes of administration, different intervals and durations of sampling, and various substances measured in addition to blood glucose. History Testing Preparation Procedure Dose of glucose and variations Substances measured and variations Results Sample method Variations Oral glucose challenge test Limitations of OGTT The glucose tolerance test was first described in 1923 by Jerome W. Kahn. The test was based on the previous work in 1913 by A.T.B. Jacobson in determining that carbohydrate ingestion results in blood glucose fluctuations, and the premise that a normal patient-fed glucose will rapidly return to normal levels of blood glucose after an initial spike, and will see improved reaction to subsequent glucose feedings. Since the 1970s, the World Health Organization and other organizations interested in diabetes agreed on a standard dose and duration. The patient is instructed not to restrict carbohydrate intake in the days or weeks before the test. The test should not be done during an illness, as results may not reflect the patient's glucose metabolism when healthy. A full adult dose should not be given to a person weighing less than 42.6 kg, or the excessive glucose may produce a false positive result. Usually the OGTT is performed in the morning as glucose tolerance can exhibit a diurnal rhythm with a significant decrease in the afternoon. The patient is instructed to fast for 8-12 hours prior to the tests. If renal glycosuria is suspected, urine samples may also be collected for testing along with the fasting and two-hour blood tests. For gestational diabetes, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommends a two-step procedure, wherein the first step is a 50 grams glucose dose. If it results in a blood glucose level of more than 7.8 mol/l, it is followed by a 100 gram glucose dose. The diagnosis of gestational diabetes is then defined by a blood glucose level exceeding the cutoff value on at least two intervals, with cutoffs as follows. The diagnosis criteria stated above by the World Health Organization are for venous samples only. An increasingly popular method for measuring blood glucose is to sample capillary or finger prick blood, which is less invasive, more convenient for the patient and requires minimal training to conduct. Though fasting blood glucose levels have been shown to be similar in both capillary and venous samples, postprandial blood glucose levels can vary. The diagnosis criteria issued by the WHO are only suitable for venous blood samples. Given the increasing popularity of capillary testing, the WHO has recommended that a conversion factor between the two sample types be calculated, but as of 2017 no conversion factor had been issued by the WHO, despite some medical professionals adopting their own. 
A standard 2-hour GDT is sufficient to diagnose or exclude all forms of diabetes mellitus at all but the earliest stages of development. Longer tests have been used for a variety of other purposes, such as detecting reactive hypoglycemia or defining subsets of hypothalamic obesity. Insulin levels are sometimes measured to detect insulin resistance or deficiency. The GDT is of limited value in the diagnosis of reactive hypoglycemia, since normal levels do not preclude the diagnosis, abnormal levels do not prove that the patient's other symptoms are related to a demonstrated atypical OGTT, and many people without symptoms of reactive hypoglycemia may have the late low glucose. The oral glucose challenge test is a short version of the OGTT used to check pregnant women for signs of gestational diabetes. It can be done at any time of day, not on an empty stomach. The test involves 50 grams of glucose, with a reading after one hour. The OGTT does not distinguish between insulin resistance in peripheral tissues and reduced capacity of the pancreas beta cells to produce insulin. The OGTT is less accurate than the hyperinsulinemic euglycemic clamp technique, or the insulin tolerance test, but is technically less difficult. Neither of the two technically demanding tests can be easily applied in a clinical setting or used in epidemiological studies. HOMA IR is a convenient way of measuring insulin resistance in normal subjects, which can be used in epidemiological studies but can give erroneous results for diabetic patients. Before glucose intake, 5.3 mol slash L, 1 hour after drinking the glucose solution, 10 mol slash L, 2 hours, 8.6 mol slash L, 3 hours, 7.8 mol slash L.